Anthony Hartwig here with a YSN South Range Girls Basketball Coaches Corner Episode 4 with Jeff Fisher. Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to join us this week. Yeah, happy to be here. It's been a while and uh, happy to see you're back and feeling better. So uh, glad we can do this again. Thank you. It has been a while. You guys have gone through a couple of things since uh, since we've been together last. Let's talk about this Holiday Hoops tournament first because that was one of the first things that happened after we last spoke. What was it like to host that kind of event which, with a uh, couple area teams, a couple teams from out of the area all, all coming to be a part of that? What was that experience like? It's always fun when, when you can get that caliber of teams to come to your home court and put on a showcase like that. Obviously a lot different this year with COVID and, and the attendance restrictions. So you know, hopefully next year we'll have some, some more people that can be there. But that, that's a fun event. And, uh, you know, you, you get to talk to a lot of other coaches and, and watch a lot of good basketball. So it's, that's a fun thing for us to do. Your two games, you took care of Boardman, and then you lost a pretty a good fight against Ordonia. What kind of things did you see from your team in that kind of event where you're playing two games back-to-back -back against two tough opponents? Yeah, it, it's fun. It's a good challenge. Uh, it's fun to go back-to-back -back and play two Division One teams. And, you know, they play a little bit different. So from one night to the other night, we've got to be ready for some different things. And, and they've got different – talent at different positions so you know it, it requires different girls to, to, to play certain ways for us and just it's really uh, a nice little two-day way for us to get better and go through the process of getting to where we want to be by the end of the season. And uh, we're about halfway through right now what kind of things are, are you really proud of about this team halfway through the season? Well I, I think and, and I'm sure we'll, we'll get to this here but you know, I, I think after the events that have taken place in, in the past four or five days, you know, what I'm most proud of, of this group is how close they are together. And and they are they they are sisters and best friends and you know they're there for each other through everything. And when you see that, you realize that you know this what we do is so much more than basketball. And, and the friendships that they're making are going to last a lifetime. And the stuff that they go through together is going to make them better people. And that's what I'm most proud about. Perfect segue. You know, I know it's been a rough couple of days for this program. You know, everyone kind of understands what happened yesterday. Uh, but even before that, a couple injuries last week. What kind of things um, have you seen from this team and the girls to just kind of deal with the adversity and, and try to stay – as close knit and as tight as possible through everything that happened. Yeah, I feel like, you know, what what has happened to us, you know, you, you may go a couple seasons without seeing that level of injury or that many injuries to a team. So for us to have it happen in a four day uh, little stretch there, um, it just it it it's a gut punch to to put it mildly. Um, and the girls are, are upset. They're, they're hurting right now. Um, you know, I, I don't, the amount of tears that, that were cried yesterday, uh, it's probably more than all the sweat that we've put out this season in, in our hard work. And, and so, you know, that just means that they care about each other and they love each other when their emotions are affected that deeply. And so they realize that they have to come together and they have to be there for each other. And, you know, really anytime that you face adversity, you need that to get through it. And, and you know, I've, I've told them over and over the past few days that, you know, I don't know why this is happening to us, but, you know, we're built for this because we're so close that if it's going to happen to anybody that's going to get through it, we're that team. And so, you know, my heart breaks for, for everybody that, that, you know, is directly affected and it breaks for the rest of the girls on our team because, you know, that's, that's their best friends that are, that are going through what's happening right now. You sent out a tweet yesterday that, that uh, 
thanked Poland for, for how they responded to everything that happened. Talk about what you saw from their program and what it means to you as an opposing coach to see uh, the other team kind of respond the way they did, even though it wasn't, you know, necessarily their teammates or their players that were affected. Yeah. Um, you know, really appreciate coach Blanche um, and, and the compassion that he showed. Um, you know, you, you could tell anybody that was there could tell that what happened is he was serious and, you know, Nick, Nick was right there. And, and when I went out there and, you know, I put my arm around Nick and, and he put his arm around me and he just said, I'm, I'm so sorry that this happened. And, uh, you know, we talked and, and, you know, he said, we probably ought to get the girls in the locker room. And, and so, you know, we thought that was a good idea. And, um, you know, I, I said, you know, he, luckily Nick's been doing this a few more years than me. And I said, coach, I don't, what do I do? You know, you, you just said, go tell your girls you love them and that you're there for them. And, and you know, that you're going to get through this and it's going to be okay. You know, and the, and the fact that, um, you know, their, their girls were just as upset as our girls, you know, and, and that, that's what a rivalry is supposed to be. Like we respect each other so much that, you know, that, that was painful for everybody to experience, you know, their girls were upset, their girls were crying. And, you know, again, that what, what we're going to get out of this is so much more than basketball and, you know, the, the, the Poland team and, and their coaches and their girls are just as classy as they come. And, and, you know, they just, they earned another level of respect in my book yesterday. And then, you know, um, something we won't forget. You know, I did a game that night. Um, the first thing both coaches in, involved said to me was, How, how's South Range doing? And I'm sure you've had a lot of people reach out to you from different teams, different coaches. What's it mean to you to see the community as a whole in the area of girls basketball kind of rally around you guys and, and just be compassionate over what, what you guys are going through? Yeah, the number of, of coaches and, and other players um, and fans, and, and, and I'm talking fans from all over the area that reached out to me. Um, I know reached out to the Lamparty family. Um, you know, it means a lot. It, it, it means a lot. It, it helps the girls to know how many people out there, uh, you know, A, are, are aware of them you know, because of what they do on the basketball court. And if, you know, nobody would have known what happened yesterday if they didn't, they weren't interested in, in what the girls were doing and what our program does. So, um, you know, I just, you know, anybody who listens, you know, who, who reached out to us yesterday, we, we appreciate it so much. It, it means so much to us. And, and you know, that's, a, that's a great thing about coaching. And, and the way that sports bring people together is, you know, yesterday I think made everybody realize that there are more important things in life than did you win or lose. And, and all of us as coaches and programs want to go out and win. And, and, you know, that's certainly something that we work at every night. But the fact that something like that can happen and, and that many people, and we're talking, all, you know, in the hundreds of, of people, that that's that's pretty special and this program has to find a way to move forward you know you, you still got games to play um what kind of messages have you had with the team um since yesterday maybe today when you're talking to them to try to get them in the right mindset that they need to that they need to be in well it's hard you know um our our, our girls like i said are hurting right now and, you know, there, there's a little bit of apprehension. You know, we, we've watched three serious injuries in four days. And so, you know, we're still waiting on some test results. And, you know, we don't know exactly where everything is going to settle with everybody. So, again, what, what is, is so nice about this group is how close they are together. And, you know, we talk about, not just now we've been talking about it that we're a program we're not a team and that you know we're playing for those that have come before us we're playing for those that are with us now and we're playing for those that are going to come after us 
And, you know, part of our motivation right now has to be, you know, our three sisters that are on the sidelines. And we've got to go play for them. And this has been a special start to the season. And it certainly has a chance to still be a special end to the season. But uh, we have to make sure that we have them in, in, in our minds and our hearts as we play. You know, we talked about the outside support, but I would be remiss to ask what the support for Raider Nation has been like and the people from the South Range community that have really backed this program and uh, what that's been like. Well, you know, first and foremost, Mrs. Dado and Mrs. Sarawan were on the floor um, when Izzy was down last night um, almost right away. You know, you know um, that, that's love of the program, love, love of the kids. And, it, and well, that's the type of people that, that we have in this community. And, you know, I, I know that we didn't, we had a lot of players who didn't sleep last night. Um, we had a lot of coaches who didn't sleep last night. And um, this, the support from this community uh, helped everybody get up today. And we're, we're gonna fight uh, to make everybody here proud, and we're going to fight to play for our fallen sisters right now. And when you look at, the, like we said, the rest of the season and, and the things that are still ahead of this team, is that kind of the message going forward, that, that there is still so much that is ahead that, that, that can make what we're going through right now kind of, kind of, you know, not worth it, but you know what I'm saying, like um, it can make it a little bit better than everything that might be in the future? You know, I, I think, you know, we can't, we can't get lost in asking ourselves, why is this happening to us? You know, I think, you know, the, the, the thing I've said, and I've said it out loud today is, you know, what, what are you teaching me, God? What are you preparing for us right now? Like, God's up to something right now. And, and so I think, you know, the exciting thing for us, and maybe that's, not quite the right word, but you know the expectations for people that people have for us just got thrown out the window, and so now we get to play with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. You know that now we have something to prove that again we're a program, not a team, and that we're we're going to come together and do this for each other. When uh, everyone in the eight is back to action, you know the the January fourth drop date was lifted and now you see the whole league playing as a coach in the NE8 and now that you see everyone kind of back and playing what does that mean to you to see every program up and running and, and knowing that kind of everyone's back to normal now well you know I'm just I'm happy those Trumba County schools and, and those kids get to play uh, you know they lost their December and, and right wrong or indifferent I'm just happy that you know they get to have a season uh, especially the seniors, you know, they, they get a chance to play some games. And, and, you know, certainly, you know, MLI went down with a foot injury. And I know that, that, that's another, you know, she's one of the best in the state. You know, and there's a girl that five, six games into her, her senior year um, goes out for, it, it sounds like maybe what is for the season. And your heart breaks for her. And that's, again, a, a gut punch that hurts. And, you know, it's just – it's not as fun to play games when, when players like that aren't in them. So, you know, we're definitely thinking about Emma and, and hope she gets well soon. But, um, you know, just, again, for everybody else, the chance to get on the floor is, you know, we, we've learned real fast. Uh, it, it's something that we shouldn't take for granted. Um, every night we get to be together and everybody's healthy and you get to be on the court is, is a gift. The districts have been released as far as who's going to be in the district that you are in. Um, I think the seedings are pretty soon, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a week out where you guys get to vote on the seedings. When you look at the district and that it's so much bigger than it has been in the past, what kind of things that kind of excite you about the different format that, that we're going into this year? Well, there's going to be some unknowns. You know, we, we've had to kind of look at some schools that are a little bit further away and, and start to get a feel for, you know, how they play and what type of roster they have. And, and you know, that way we can just kind of not be caught off guard once. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think the draw is two weeks from yesterday. So we're, we're just a little bit under two weeks from figuring out. We'll vote next week and the draw will be the Sunday after. Um, so we'll figure out then. And, and, you know, you look at the district and 
you know, it's exciting that there's a lot of really good teams in this, what they call super districts now. And, you know, they'll split it up into to, to two districts and you get to pick kind of depending on where you're seated, which bracket you're in. And it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge for everybody that's in those two brackets because there's a lot of their basketball teams. Everything's kind of uncertain, but if it goes the way it did as volleyball went, you know, the top seed hosts all the way to the district championship. Uh, if you're put in that position, just describe what it would be like to host a district championship in South Range and, and to be on the home floor for that kind of atmosphere. I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for this, but I would if we make it to the district championship game, I would rather that game be played at the Struthers Fieldhouse. Uh, that, that's a gym that feels right. It feels like that's where that type of game can be at. But our gym is still my favorite gym. And so um, we got a lot of work to do. If, if we could cut down the nets there, uh, I think that's something that, uh, you know, myself and our seniors will never forget. Sounds like a win-win either way, right? <laughs> we, got, we got to get that far. Um, right. But, but if, if we can do that, uh, that'll be cool. And, and you know, there, there's going to be a lot of teams around the state that win district championships on our home court, and that'll be a cool experience for them. Uh, injuries aside, what about a halfway through season progress report that you would give for this team based on the expectations you set back in the beginning of the season? Well, I feel like it's been about three seasons, um, you know, be between COVID and, and, and now what's happened this past week. Um, it, it's, it feel, it's hard to believe that it's January 19th today or whatever it is. And, you know, um, you know, it, it's kind of flown by since we started against Laurel, and, and there's been a lot that's happened. But, you know, we're, we're right where we wanted the process to take us. You know, we've, we've had a really challenging non-conference schedule, and we've taken care of business in our conference games. And, you know, we, we got quarantined, so we didn't get to play Poland the original time, uh, beginning of January, that we were supposed to, and, and, you know, obviously yesterday's game got postponed. So, you know, still haven't had the head to head matchup with Poland, but, you know, part of our goal was to, you know, see what we could do with them and see if we could win a league championship. So nine and three through 12 games and, and everything's sort of right on pace for where we we're kind of hoping it would be. Uh, when you, I want to ask about the Saturday game before we let you go, because that was a game where you were going into it. You had two starters down. There was already some adversity. Uh, and Gerard was one of those teams that came in three and two. They were definitely more talented enough to, to beat a team if they didn't show up. So what, what do you see from your team on Saturday and, and to deal with that adversity and to play the way they did and execute the way they did against a, a fairly decent Gerard team? Well, you, you said it in the question. We showed up. You know, we, we knew that if – when Gerard found out that Gabby and Bree weren't going to play, that probably lifted their spirits a little bit. Like, okay, maybe we can go there and get one. And, uh, you know, we talked to the locker room and said, hey, if, if we come out in the first quarter and, and play like we're feeling sorry for ourselves and, and we let Gerard stick around, they're a really good basketball team. And, and Coach Saxon is, is a heck of a coach and he's won a lot of games. That They'll stick around and be in that thing for four quarters and give us a problem. And, you know, you, you look up and it's 6 nothing us. We scored boom, boom, boom like that. and. Uh, you know, one of the refs looked at me and, uh, you know, cause we were playing with intensity and I was coaching with intensity and I said, well, we're just a little pissed off today. So, um, we came out and, and played in that first quarter and, you know, Izzy had a career high. I think she had a career high in points, assists, and steals that game. Her line was like 35, eight, seven, and six or something like that. Um, heck of a stat line in a game where we really needed, uh, her to show up without, uh, Gabby and Bree. And before we let you go, you know, obviously let's, this last week. Can we week, end with something fun here? Let's, yeah, let's lighten this, the mood here. This, this last week, you know, you've had to probably reflect a lot. So I'm wondering as a player, what are some of your favorite memories with your coaches that you had lead you uh, that you kind of reflect on now that you're a head coach at the varsity level? Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the things that we learned from Coach McHugh was that if, if somebody was struggling or – you know, if somebody got injured or somebody wasn't doing what they were supposed to do, that it wasn't his responsibility to take care of him. It was the teammates, you know, and it was like, if something happened, 
it wasn't their fault. It was our fault because we let it happen. And then we weren't there to help them. And, you know, you, you just learn how important it is to hold each other accountable. And what happens is when you hold each other accountable, you trust each other. And when you start to trust each other, you start to love each other. When you love each other, you get really close and all that stuff and all that stuff just happens. And, you know, that's, that's where our program's at right now. And that's why I'm so proud of these girls. And, and that's why I'm so heartbroken for these girls because um, they're getting through this together, but I know how hard it is for them and, and, and how much they're hurting, but we're proud of them. And, and you know, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. We're going to all be in the gym together. We got a team meal tomorrow night. And um, I'm sure the girls are going to be telling jokes and having fun. And, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to go to Niles Thursday and try and get the win column and, and kick the second half of the year off the right way. YSN social media question. What's your favorite fictional athlete in a movie or TV show? Uh, it is, can I cheat and say Michael Jordan and Space Jam? Like, is sure, that? let's do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was, that was always a favorite as a kid. So I don't, I don't know if that's technically fictional or not. Well, he stretched his arm like. Yeah, I guess he had, he had, this, so. he had some fictional aspects. Yeah, so. so we'll, 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 we'll like. Always we'll a fan of Mike. It. Mike's better than LeBron. Sorry, people. <laughs> uh, that's going to get the emails coming. Well, I got to get people riled up a little bit. Start, let's start talking about some fun stuff. Send me, send me messages, hate mail about LeBron. Hey. I love LeBron too. This, one's got to be better than the other, right? Yep, that's right. All right, Coach, thank you so much for joining us uh, in this tough week. Good luck to, uh, in the week to come, and we'll talk to you again next week uh, All for right, episode good, five. Good to have you back, man. All right, it's good to see you, and we'll talk real soon. All right, bye, Coach. All right, see ya.